My name is Cara Gaynor and I'm a professional golfer. Golf is everything to me. I turned pro in 2020 at the age of 24. I joined the LET in 2021, having spent the season before with the LET Access Series, where I was named Rookie of the Year. I got into golf quite late. It wasn't the sport I played first. My dream has always been to win a major, but it hasn't always been in golf. Things could have been a lot different. When I was 10 to 12, being a professional tennis player was my dream. I first started playing tennis when I was four or five. I started mini tennis, so that's Red Bull tennis. Uh, after school and then I ended up doing a program at my uh, local tennis club and I love training, I love to practice, uh, I love playing with my friends, girls I was very close with, uh, we used to train together. Fondest memories, I played a lot of counter tennis growing up and we used to go away on a lot of trips for these tournaments, travelling to places that you know you hadn't been to as a youngster, I mean I was 13, 14 years old so going away to sort of Isle of Man and different counties around the country was just really cool as a player. What was Cara like as a kid? Really energetic. She was clearly coordinated. She was always the nearest tree she'd climb up, the nearest climbing frame she'd climb up. Just always into ball sports, actually. So had always had a good hand-eye coordination. You know, hit every single team, I think, at school and was, was, uh, showed a great aptitude for it. The two sports really intertwine because they're obviously both uh, big hand-eye coordination sports, both hitting a ball, they're both individual sports. So I think playing tennis really gave me a big leg up in terms of experience of competition and being uh, an elite athlete. It was really important for me to have, have had those experiences as a young player, organising your time. You know, I had to organise school, training, you know, when I would gym, when I would fit all those different things in. So yeah, it was a massive, massive help for me. As a tennis player, Probably if I could sum it up in one word, would be disciplined, focused on what she wanted to do. She was very determined. She would embrace challenge, I think, and she was always personally interested in taking the next step and moving things on. Although as coaches, we were always trying to push, you know, she was, she was intrigued to know what was next. So this has been a real trip down memory lane for me, just digging out of all the car and stuff. So I've just got a selection of um, bits and pieces here. A few medals, we did a lot of stats analysis. I'm an architect so I do everything on tracing paper so we did these analysis of forehand and backhand shots and winners and losers so that would kind of tend to feed into her work and um, her training methods and that's really a bit of a foundation I think for some of her golf training. Um, lots of notes on improvements on forehand as a weapon, things to work on, training regimes, sports planners. Um, she was a sort of a Oxfordshire sort of performance player and we'd, have, we'd plan out the tournaments, all the training sessions, what she had to work on for each training session. Um, it's a really regimented and very good sort of um, regime to, to, to perform in tennis. So quite a few years ago, before we built this extension, we had a sort of similar shed to what you see over there. Um, and all the ground was level and this was all tarmac. And that was Cara's tennis court, basically. She would just smash balls straight against that shed. It's probably one of the reasons we had to knock it down and build another one because all the weatherboarding had just been completely destroyed. But um, that was that's a, a real memory. I can hear those balls banging against the, the weatherboard, and it was just something to really take me back. She was very disciplined about what she was doing, almost quite methodical. And I think probably you've seen that now through her golf as well. She's not going to get to where she's got to already with the golf without being competitive. If the chips were down and we were coming into what we were calling tennis the last rubber of the day, then we would feel confident putting Cara onto a doubles court and knowing that not only would she compete well herself, but also again help pull along her partner if she was playing in a double situation. So yeah, very competitive. Just brings back a lot of memories. Yeah, I know. Let's see how you hit it nowadays, huh? <laughs> You've got to give me a bit of slack here. <laughs> I reckon that forehand's still going to be pretty good. Oh. 
Oh. Keep going. Taking it early. Keep going. Oh. That's a great shot, Cara. I didn't finish my tennis career until I was 17 years old. So there was a period of two or three years where I was still training a lot with tennis and I was then, you know, I guess trying to see if I was any good at golf and see if I enjoyed it really. That was the, the most important part. So her tennis had been going about four or five years. I took her to the Drayton Golf Range, more for me to play. I know as part of her childcare was like, I'll take her to the golf range. And she sort of said, yeah, I quite like this. And I thought, well, I can't teach you how to play. If you want to be able to play it, I'll probably have to get you into a group like we did with tennis. She probably improved at that much quicker than she had at tennis, actually. Got a handicap quite early on and that just started to drop. Tennis has always been my kind of first love. I still love watching it now, watching professional tennis. But yeah, I guess once I had graduated from uni and I won the English Amateur, that's when I kind of put my full focus into golf and thought this could be a career for me and, you know, potentially a very successful one. So, come across the chest again. Same rehearsal. Tilt deep into that right hip. Good. Shift. Down. Right hip. Good in position forward, bend side bend, look down the line and then tuck your tailbone under. Right foot, right foot through. Good. Nice. My name's Rob Watts. I'm the head coach at Castle Royal Golf and Country Club. I'm the current England men's lead coach and coach to Cara Gaynor. The disciplines around the game of tennis have been very transferable to golf. I remember a father telling me she used to have to hit a cone on the course and constantly hit that cone. Whether we're hitting pitch shots or chip shots or full game shots, we have a distinct plan of what we're trying to do with that golf shot. I think that comes from, again, a lot of what she's been doing with her tennis. Down, stay in that side bend, forward bend there. Now round the corner, there. Right, let's hit some. So good. Because she's so keen and easy to coach, she kind of takes on board the information and goes and works on it. And then she does work hard. So when she comes back, you could always see a constant improvement. She didn't go to the US college system. So she was probably three or four years behind timeline against some of her peers in the game right now, but she's catching and if not gone past many. Yeah, gets the birdie. Well done, Cara Gaynor. that didn't go to American College, say so she's catching up on all the other players. The more perseverance, the more practice you gave it, the more you improved. And I saw that, especially once I had graduated, when I really put my full commitment into the game and I suddenly improved tenfold uh, in terms of my handicap reduction and things like that. So uh, yeah, it was all about keep practicing. I have very little involvement now. I had in the amateur years, and I'm just not good enough to even begin to advise her now. And um, I'm definitely now just a spectator, but I'm really enjoying watching the improvement and the sorts of tournaments that she's in now and the players that she's playing with. I think it, you know, she deserves to be where she is, and hopefully she can just keep that going. Best thing playing on the LET is definitely the level of tournaments we get to play. We have some really big events where we're playing with some of the world's best players as well. I couldn't think of anything better that I'd rather do, really. The travel is amazing. The opportunities we have are only getting better. The financial opportunities we're getting now is really amazing. And if you play well and you do well, you can make a, a real good living for yourself, uh, doing something that you love and that you've dreamed of for a long time. Maybe me not dream of since I was a child, but certainly, uh, you know, the last seven, eight years, uh, it's been my dream. Be a world-class player, you've got to be a world-class worker. And that's something she definitely has. And there's a burning desire within her. You can tell that in how she trains. We have a set plan every day, what she does, from gym, from performance work, from technical work, whatever that might be, we're on a mission to become the best player we can be. My eldest son, who's only 13, plays golf and is uber passionate about following a career in golf. So it's great to be able to have somebody local somebody that you can relate to um, and be able to you know have Cara up there as a role model and and what a great role model she is yeah i'm so proud of Cara. she's done extraordinarily well i'm 
just a great application. She's shown the promise that she looked like she was showing um, in all her sporting endeavours at school. You, know, you, you, you knew she was good at sport, you just didn't know the, the route that she could take and to our total surprise, it's golf. To go from there to this is a pretty big extreme, I guess. To become world number one, that's my ultimate goal. Obviously, you want to win major championships uh, like any other professional golfer there, the best tournaments in golf. It's going to be a really tough ask, but I'm really committed to this. I put my 100% into everything I do every day when I practice, and I'm really looking forward to the opportunities that are going to come.